What's up guys, it's Hatayat7 RCT bringing you another video, hope you guys are doing well out there. This is it guys, I think uh, this is the end of the road for the series at least for now. I'm going to end everything with uh, number 10 in the emulation 2019 was good today. With uh, kind of like a bonus, let's call it, uh, the Jaguar console. Now I mentioned this in the previous video that I did with... Um, talking about 3DO and the 4DO that I wanted to use this emulator back then to also run the 3DO but I just wanted to keep like uh, individual for basically all the emulators and I prefer to leave uh, Project Phoenix for this one being that um, if I had to compare even though the 3DO experience on the Project Phoenix is pretty good I would call it a godsend when it comes to Jaguar emulation because before this, the options were very limited. I mean, I had for the longest time, um, I think it was Project, Project, uh, what was it? Project 64 something. And oh my God, that thing was, oh, it was, it was, a, it was a pain in the ass. It was a pain in the ass. Now, I'm not taking anything away from that team's, you know, development because you never know what are the resources, you never know what is the time available or, you know, if they had any support. And most of these groups or projects, they need to have a strong community support because it's not easy for you to do or go on your own to do something of, you know, this kind of endeavor and basically, you know, soloing it because it's not going to happen. But um, the point is that uh, this one, Project Phoenix, was something that I came into, I ran into uh, going through some forums and stuff, and somebody brought it up, and they said how this team of Russians uh, build this. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's basing it on Mednafin. I think that's the case. Now, Mednafin and RetroArch and some other multi-emulator front ends or software is something that I, I will dive into later on. I want to treat it separately from this series because I just wanted to highlight with this series the best of each category or the best that I feel I like using for a specific console. And in this case, it's just going to be Project Phoenix. English translated, of course, because the team who uh, has uh, developed this is a team of Russian. And um, basically, I'm going to be showing you guys through what it is that you need to set up or what are you going to be looking through in order to run specifically the Jaguar uh, console. In Project Phoenix, you can basically run, uh, it has a limit of the consoles that they are basically um, developing for right now or they're trying to emulate which is Atari Jaguar, a Panasonic 3DO, uh, ColecoVision and I think uh, Atari from the old school stuff I'm not quite sure but those are the consoles that this uh, software basically emulates but enough of that let's go into it so you can see what I'm talking about all right guys so here we are now I had to do this one, this part of the video, I had to do it again because for some reason um, moving from this window in the emulator to full screen kind of screwed with the, with the video recording. So for the purpose of not having to repeat this again, I'm going to have to just show you guys this view, which is inside the window basically, but at least you'll see how well it runs it runs perfect I just did a test um, so yeah basically I had in the other video the other take that I couldn't include here was 
I showed you an example of another Jaguar uh, emulator that was the one one of the options available before I ran into this one and that was a virtual Jaguar now virtual Jaguar has some redeeming features but to me I, I didn't want to choose that one because it didn't offer enough options for the gamer to you know pick and choose like resolutions and control configurations and stuff like that this one on the other hand uh, Project Phoenix is uh, is done by a team of uh, Russian guys that took apparently uh, the base of Mednafin or something similar on, on those lines. I could be wrong, but that's that's the impression that I get is that they took those and worked upon that to make this multi-console emulator because this not only runs Jaguar but runs Coleco and runs uh, 3DO as well. Um, but yeah, uh, but at, when it comes to Jaguar and stuff, it has basically everything that you would want to once you configure, of course, all the folders and bios and stuff like that, which is on par with other emulators. This one gives you uh, enough leeway for you to like mess around with the settings and you know try to configure video and audio and stuff. Which for the video, I also lowered the volume a little bit because it is really really good sound even though you will see in some games or here in some games um, some crackling and some echoing and stuff like that but aside from that you know very small issue with the sound all of the games play perfect and even beyond that you can you know add some filters if the game does not look very good in the resolution so that being said, let's mess around with some games. The first one up, which is I think the most infamous one from the Jaguar back in the day, and the one that had like the most critical acclaim, uh, Alien vs. Predator. You get your choice of the marine, very doom like and feel. But at the time, I remember watching this or reading about it in the, in the magazines, and I was like, What? It looks like that, that looks amazing. did configure, I'm wondering, I did configure my numpad to the controls, but I guess I need to dive a little bit deeper in order to find out what's what. That what on earth got a hold of this guy? Oh, nice little voice. What's the fire? That's the fire button. Okay. I wonder what button changes <coughs> the weapons. <coughs> All right, so I have the little mini map in the middle. I know what the fire button is, so. Just move around here. <laughs> Start shooting some shit. The dead body there. Ooh. here
but at the very least I can say that it runs it pretty smooth it's a matter of me basically let me see if I can reset here yeah and pick and choose another character to show you the difference pick the predator hey guys you gotta remember, I'm not here, or the point of the video is not to criticize the game itself, even though I will have some funny memories from time to time when I get into a game that I've played before and I enjoyed or not enjoyed. The point of the videos is more to show you guys how well or how faithful the emulators, how well they run said games and how faithful they run it to the, you know, the original console and stuff. And you do have options to, in certain uh, cases, change how the game will look. Like they're adding a little bit of a filter. Like in this case, where you eliminate all sorts of filters and just leave it at the, at the original resolution. And everything runs smoothly, I have to say. Plus you have the, the, the ability, of course, of setting up the controller any way you want. But enough of that, let's get into Cybermorph, which was basically, it's kind of going a little happy with the sound, so let me bring that down a little bit. And this one was a launch title, so... Okay, so the first button is acceleration, that one is a brake, and this one is the fire. Oh, I can actually reverse as well. Good work. So I'm guessing I need to grab these crystals. a little disturbing but okay I'll play it on well done. oh more crystals here Well done. So that's green skull. Okay, the enemy. Well done. I'm 
putting everything left and right, and all I'm getting is well done. But as you can see, it plays very well. Did you, you learn to fly? So with the exception of a little bit of delay there with the voice, it's a pretty good and faithful rendition. Let's stop it right there. Let's go into Defender 2000. Oh yeah. Here is a case or a use case where you can actually benefit from adding a little bit of smoothing out the graphics to make it feel more like you're playing it on an actual CRT. Not to go too crazy, of course, but smoothing out Jaggies enough to make it nice and smooth. Here we go. Oh man. Defender. Shit, why am I killing? I'm not supposed to kill the humans. I'm supposed to save them. to this one. Now the volume seems to be a little too low. And I'm dead. But man, does it ever go fast. Jesus. I mean, it looks so much better, but I would guess that this game would benefit a ton by having a wider screen, like, aspect ratio. Because Defender, you know, it was kind of like a long-ass screen, and you had a lot more visibility. Here, you don't have almost time to react. I wish I could show you guys this in full screen and how beautiful it looks, but unfortunately I can't do that because it will screw up. I don't know what's going on, but layer is messing up with the uh, relive function, recording function, but it is messing it up. But it should give you a good idea. Now that's working pretty good. Um, let me see what else from the Jaguar library. Let's bring up Kasumi Ninja. Kasumi Ninja! Now, of course, I will be doing a extras videos with some more gameplay, more extended gameplay on each one, so you can better, you know, appreciate what each of the games are. This one had that has that weird sound issue, but... Upon it. Round one. Damn. 
Really? Dynamite? Oh my god. I'm dead. That's it. Alaric wins. Round two. Senso got beaten to the pulp. Oh, well. Five, four, three, At least it's two, playable. One. Now let's see what else can we bring here. Uh, how about Total Carnage? Now this is one of the titles that even though <clears throat> it wasn't as impressive as... You know, as a 64-bit title, I mean, let's get real, but at least this one, I feel, it did a good job of bringing the arcade experience, in the sense that it, the sound is amazing, and the graphics are pretty faithful to the arcade. If I only... Six or something along those lines, but it's still, in terms of sounds and graphics, it's still a very, very faithful arcade rendition of Total Carnage, so that's kind of cool. Um, I don't know what else uh, I should do here. Raymond, but Raymond is like it is like D version. I consider this one to be the like the most colorful and the most I don't know the most the prettiest version to be honest. Definitely like this one much much better than the PlayStation one. forget about this, just want to show off the game a little bit.
Oh! Okay. one compares to to the other 16-bit offerings at the time. rendition of the, the actual bomb animation. And I remember playing this in, in the Sega Genesis version and yeah, it wasn't nearly as colorful. Again, they're pretty much okay but still not something that would show off like this has the power of 64 bit or whatever you know i guess that's the main theme going on for uh the short life of the jaguar now playing to the strengths i think one thing that it did actually pretty well was doing these more elaborate 3d stuff like doom As far as I can tell, um, this is the best console version, or was the best console version for a very long time. I'm gonna go in really quick, just to show.
there you have Doom. And I guess the last one I'm gonna feature here or show you guys is Trevor McFur. This was a shoot em up that I was very interested in, in screenshots uh, back in the day in the magazines like Game Fan and Electronic Gaming. And I love the way the art looked, and I was blown away thinking how amazing this title would have been. And as good as it looks, it just doesn't have that a lot of substance to it, but it's still a, a very beautiful game. Uh, a very nice effort at the time and comparing the graphics of the visuals of this to the earlier 16-bit titles it did you know pretty good the problem was that it was still is very cheap so it's not a game that you're easily gonna get into call it kind of similar to the feel you get when you first play probably R-Type, but at least R-Type builds you up to that, you know, to that difficulty. This one, it's just cheap. I mean, you, you don't get you don't get a lot of chance to get comfortable, even with the controls and stuff. And it just doesn't feel like it has enough substance. It's like things are being thrown to you left and right, and there's no like progression to other stages and other big bosses and stuff like that. But I would have loved to see a more fleshed out game because it is pretty nice. It is. It looks really, really, really nice in the context, you know. I just wish it had more substance. But, again, not here to judge the games. The games are what they are. And this emulator, as I explained, it's a really good way of diving into the games and experiencing what, you know, most of us experienced back in at the time where the Atari Jaguar launched. So, that's going to be it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Every little bit helps. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.